Hello again, Pietro here, and time for another reboxing of sort, and a 59 days later, so two months later, with the Garmin Tactics Delta. Let me talk to you about what I liked, what I didn't like, what I learned about the watch, and possibly some cool hidden features depending upon how long you've had the watch and how much you've clicked around. So. Let's go. Let's take a look at this military grade uh, super smartwatch. And yes, this is the solar edition with the sapphire lens. Here we go. So we'll just start with a fun feature. This watch allows you to find places to worship. It says right here, launch Mecha Finder. It will alert you and let you know that you can join them and yeah, I, I'm not gonna pretend to know a lot about this, but I saw it in the watch and so I installed it and it installs as a widget. So you just scroll down, Mecha Finder, and it uses the GPS to find Mecha. It's a free install that you can do through the watch. I thought that was pretty cool through Garmin Connect. So maybe you didn't know about that. The other cool thing is wind and wave. Now I'm not near an ocean, so this is not gonna work. You are too far away from the seaside, but cool feature if you live near the ocean. And yes, you can install music on the watch. Real easy to do. The other fun thing that I really like, and this is not particular just to this Garmin watch, the Tactics Delta, but also the Phoenix watches and the Garmin Enduro and the Garmin Instinct. When you first start a workout, and then if you long press on the menu, it shows you right there that I have 17 hours remaining. My battery life is 30%. I love this feature. So if you wanna do a long workout or you start working out and you're wondering, oh, I wonder how much longer my Garmin can monitor the status, Garmin lets you know, it said GPS is ready. So I made a mistake last night. My sleep did not track. And the reason being is because I did a walk yesterday and I went like this, resume later. <laughs> uh, when you do that, this happens and you get no sleep data. Some, for one reason or another, when you have pending workouts, it cancels out the sleep. So that's something I've learned not to do. And I'm gonna have shortcuts in the description below so you can skip around to the parts that you like. There we go, so we'll start that, stop it, and save. Now, when I compare this to the Enduro, this one is quite a bit faster. It saves faster, it navigates more quickly. This is another cool feature that I've enjoyed about the watch. Aerobic effect, anaerobic effect, VO2 max, recovery, one hour. Love the recovery time, which I find to be somewhat accurate. And then we have all stats right there on the watch, descent, and then there's even more within the app on the phone and then also online. So now if I go to bed tonight with this watch, it would track it. I kind of came up with a rating system for watches when I test them so I could kind of be consistent. Number one, communication and in point communication with the mothership, meaning how, what does it communicate with your smartphone that you have it paired to? I've had it paired to the OnePlus 9 Pro, which does really well. And it right there, it quickly synchronized my activity without me having to do anything through Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi. It's awesome. Never lose an activity. I've never had this one lock, lock up on me. I did have that problem with the Enduro and also the Instinct. The watch faces are also cool, but oh, I'm getting distracted here. So communication. A true smartwatch is both readable and writable, and this means that you can not only get a text message, but also reply, and this is something this watch does. So when you get a text message, it appears right there on the phone, and you can click on the button and say, reply, and I can say, sorry, I can't talk not now, on my way. And then that text message quickly goes through your phone to the other person, and there we go. On my way, hello. So now that person can type back and say, sounds good. And then I can scroll down and I can reply again and just say, okay. And then it sends a reply, and then it sends them from there, okay, sent from my Garmin. Pretty cool, right? So that's one thing, kind of a necessity for me, 
that I'm able to reply from text messages. And you can customize those messages within the watch. Number two, accuracy. The wearable, you know, whether it's a Garmin, whether it's a OnePlus, Samsung, uh, the other one I'm still testing, the Apple Watch, they all have to be accurate, give or take. And they have warnings on them, you know, this is not a medical device. But the GPS on this Tactic Series was designed for military-grade customers, and to date, I've never been disappointed with Garmin, the GPS technology, uh, or their hardware. Number three, consistency. I'm lucky enough to have two wrists for wearable real estate, and I don't plan on wasting it, and I'm often wearing two watches, sometimes three. I'm doing an accuracy test, an accuracy test between OnePlus and Samsung right now, and also Garmin to see how they all compare. So I'll be wearing three watches today. As far as consistency, the gadget shouldn't fail and it needs to prove to be, Garmin just delivers again with this consistent experience year after year, and I've been wearing them since 2002. They're, they're just great watches. And then also on the other point, it just gives you a standard battery estimate, which is pretty good within several hours, I would say. On my experience. Number four, design. Both the hardware and the software must form a harmonious marriage of functionality. So here's the software, it just communicates, it just works. Apple does this well, Fitbit, Wiving, Samsung, and a few others. Google, well, Wear OS has kind of been a love-hate relationship for me, <laughs> so we won't go there. Uh, it just kind of still lacks the polish that Garmin, Samsung, Apple, and Wivings, and a few others that I really like have already achieved. Number five, sleep tracking. Well, uh, I'll show you some sleep data from another night since I screwed up and messed up last night. And it's that time of the night, Sunday the 16th of May. Time to record my sleep from last night before it disappears. Advanced sleep, that is. So we have restless sleep. Yep, I agree with that. Score of 65. Quality, fair, yes, it was only fair. I was up way too late. There's the duration, deep, 41, all right. Light sleep, REM, awake. You did not sleep calmly. Your body may feel sluggish today. Yeah, I did feel sluggish today. Thanks, Garmin. And then no uh, special insight, that right there. And the score, of course, 65. It is now almost 22.30, so almost 10.30 p.m. here in Utah. And if you look at my day, not that I was lazy today. I mean, I did go on a four mile bike ride with the kids, got some intensity minutes, climbed 10 flights of stairs, only 4,500 steps, but hey, you know, that four mile bike ride, that's pretty good for me on a Sunday. So that was the advanced sleep. Now, unfortunately, Garmin doesn't have the advanced sleep on here. When you go to calendar and you go to a previous day, even though you have that advanced sleep on the watch that I just showed you, this is all you're gonna be seeing right now. And they're, they're fixing that. So as you sleep, it does the stages, it does pulse, it does respiration, tells you your average breaths per night. Uh, the SpO2 is also really good, that Pulse OX. And you can even hold your finger down and see how your, how your Pulse OX or SpO2 was during the different stages of sleep. Pretty cool, right? And then if you go into stages, there are your different stages, deep, light, REM, and awake. And I've done other videos on this if you wanna watch them and I've created playlists as well. So here's the respiration timer line. So you can see how my respiration changes throughout the night. And usually it's pretty consistent, 12 to 14 breaths per minute. So I really like Garmin Sleep. I find it to be accurate when I compare it with OnePlus, Samsung. So you think, oh, well, that deep sleep wasn't accurate. When I compare them all together, they kind of back up each other. The only thing I, I do wish that Garmin would add the ability to track naps, that would be nice. Number six, charging. It is a watch, you need to wear it often to tell the time. If it requires overnight charging, no dice. If it takes less than 90 minutes to fully charge and then lasts a weekend, or in this case, 
I still have another four days and I'm at 29%. Yes, I really like that. So even though this Garmin does have a large battery, it still fully charges in less than an hour and a half. The other cool thing on charging right here, you can see the little gray ring. That's the solar panel for this watch. And then the entire watch face is power glass to even further help charge the watch when you're outdoors. And uh, when you're indoors on certain incandescent lights, it also charges. Number seven for me, along with charging, battery life. If the device charges quickly, case in point, the OnePlus, it charges really quickly, but it doesn't last as long. Actually, it does pretty good. This will last almost two weeks. This one can go almost 18 days especially if you're getting lots of outdoor sunlight. My dream months ago, my dream three years ago was pretty simple. It was to end my day on Friday, charge my watch, take it off the charger, use it all day Friday, use it all day Saturday, use it all day Sunday, and not have to worry about battery life until I got back to work on Monday. And the tactics allows you to do that. Apple doesn't, OnePlus does, Samsung, yes, the, this Gear Fit too. But there's a lot of watches where you're just constantly charging them. Sorry to make fun of you, Apple, but that's one of the things I dislike about Apple. So battery life is just amazing. Next, website interface. So not only do you have all your stats in your watch, you have more stats within the Garmin Connect app. You can also go online and view your stats and reports and just so much extra information about your workouts and your sleep. Uh, Wiving does this, Aura Ring does this, uh, Jawbone if they're still around, Fossil, Apple and Samsung, are you watching? Apple and Samsung, are you watching and taking copious notes? Please do. I would love to have all those stats for Apple and also Samsung, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Okay, number nine continuity. Everything on the watch should be accessible through the app or online, right? The Garmin design team had to have more than a few meetings about the watch software communication. And yes, within the Garmin mobile app, there's a plethora of health data. You have your body battery, you have your stress, you have steps, flights of stairs, you have your insight. I mean, it's all there and very accessible. Well, I don't like it when they have data that's on the watch and not in the app. I really dislike that. So yesterday, here's my, uh, here's my walking workout. So there's the elevation gain. Okay, where is my recovery time? Because that was on the watch, remember? So there's the exercise load, nine. Where does it say my recovery time was one hour? So Garmin's not perfect. There's my aerobic training effect, but no recovery time. Basically, as far as continuity, there, there's four things that bother me. One, advanced sleep data. This has been broken for uh, about four or five months. Steps while walking. So when I was in that walking workout, I could view my steps right on the watch, but then you can't view that data in the app or online. I mean, it's a little thing, but it's something they could easily fix. And number C, that re recovery heart rate. Uh, after your workout, you can do the recovery heart and it gives you the score. I don't know where that goes. And then D, the digital brownie points when goals are achieved. This is one of their more advanced watches, similar to the Marquis and the Phoenix series. And when you reach your goal, I would just like a little bit more animation. That's all. Number 10, sounds. I'm a music lover at heart and smartwatches should have a speakerphone, not only for alarms and notifications, but also for music and phone calls. And this one has music that you can play through Bluetooth if you connect to your favorite Bluetooth headphones, but you can't play music through here. And then there's no setting to increase the volume. And I realize this is a military watch, but the Garmin Enduro had the same thing that you can't go in and adjust the sound. You can turn sound on or off, but if you wanted audio prompts to be a little louder or softer, it's missing that setting. Okay, number 11. 
Okay, number 11, hourly chime and other old school features such as AOD, always on display. If you remember older Timex watches, they were just always on and you didn't have to do the, the wrist thing. Uh, this is one, both of these have AOD display and then this one, as soon as you raise it up, the, the watch face turns on. I had to click the button because I'm not wearing it. Anyway, AOD is kind of a big keyword lately and a lot of people want it on their watches. Garmin's had this forever. They use this beautiful electronic ink and you can see it great indoors and out. And then there's also a backlight to really brighten up the screen. And I'll show you some of the watch faces that come pre-installed. There's a tactics one right there. There's another tactics one and you can customize these as well. There's an analog one. There's one that shows altitude. Little three digits. Let's try that one. Apply. And there is no ticking sound on this one. Just want to let you know. And there's probably another hundred watch faces plus that you can install through the Garmin uh, apps. It's real easy to install the watch faces. You just open up Garmin IQ on your Android phone. It'll connect to your watch. So there it says my device, Tactics Delta Solar, and you can install new apps, new widgets. There's the Garmin Mecha Finder that I had installed. And you can go to face it and you can install custom watch faces. If you go to search, anyway, the list goes on. And then as soon as you wear this, it'll automatically show your heart rate right on your wrist. So the watch faces are really cool. So I am going to re, I am actually not returning this one. I am gonna box it up. I'm selling it to my friend. So now we get to do a really fun test. We're going to erase the data. So I've synchronized everything. You know what, let me synchronize it one more time. All right, and now the fun part. If you go into menu, Scroll on down. Oh wait, battery life fall up. So this was charged well over half an hour ago. Still 100% awesome. So you wanna to go to settings, system, hotkeys, and this is where you enable screenshots and kill switch. So start and up button, these two. You wanna make sure you really remember that. And if you don't wanna do it, you can change it to lap or flashlight or whatever, but I'm gonna leave it kill switch. So here we go, I've synchronized the watch, backed up all the screenshots. Kill switch activated. Press any key to cancel. I don't know, what do you think? Okay, okay, yeah, let's do it. Here goes nothing. What just happened? No sound, that's it. Kill switch has been activated and now the data is being wiped. So had I been in a compromising situation, I'd be okay. So if you're about to get captured by the enemy or you're about to sell this to a friend, there you go. You can just do the kill switch and it just wipes out everything. And there's the erase icon that Garmin gives you that everything is being erased. And now none of my data will be compromised. So that's good to know. And yes, there are chapter shortcuts down below if you want to skip around. I just want to show this in real time. And before you play around the kill switch, make sure you back up your latest workout and your latest stats. And there we go. That whole process took about four minutes. So now I can say English, download Garmin app, complete setup. So that's what it's gonna be doing. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, power this down. And now the watch is completely reset.